One world currency. The new world order. Those are the roots of trouble. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole? Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is. But it's there. Like a splinter in your mind. Driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence. On infiltration instead of invasion on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from FederalJack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's live edition. It is August 22nd, 2012. And there's a ton of stuff I want to go over. First, before I forget, I want to give a shout-out. and uh, Well, not a shout-out, I guess a, uh, something a little more respectful. To uh, George Hickman. He was one of the Tuskegee Airmen, and uh, he passed away two days ago on Monday. So uh, fair winds and following seas, my friend. George Hickman, Tuskegee Airman, was a real gentleman right up until the, uh, the day he died. You can go check him out. The local news stations around where he lived uh, did um, a, a tribute to him. He was, uh, in case you don't know, the Tuskegee Airmen were the guys that were, they were uh, an all a black Army Air Corps uh, group. They are all black pilots, basically, uh, the first black pilots. And these guys, I mean, these uh, Hickam talked about the fact that he got spit on when he was in his uniform just for being a black guy. So uh, they had balls. I'll give them that. They really did. These guys had a set of brass balls, and they were also used uh, by the government in experiments. You can go check out what they did to them. But uh, George Hickman. So we lost a good man two days ago. I thought I'd bring that up because uh, I was busy Monday, and uh, I, I didn't hear Joe. I, I don't think uh, Joe even knew about it yesterday, so I figured I wanted to bring it up, make sure everybody knew. Not, I mean, you know, there's there's nothing, there's nothing you can uh, really do or anything. He passed away, but we should at least honor the guy. So from one vet to another, fair winds and following seas, George. All right, let's move on. There's a ton of stuff I want to rip into today. Uh, the first thing I want to go over is this hurricane that's coming towards us. And it's going to mow right over the top of us and go up towards Tampa, supposedly. Supposedly. Of course, the tracks that I've seen have it going south of Cuba. But, okay. Let's, let's discuss why they're pushing this whole thing. It serves multiple purposes okay for one if the storm well let, let's let's say the storm go, takes the southerly track right and it goes uh over puerto rico and uh you know dom rep and haiti and towards cuba and stays south of cuba hits cuba 
go south like some of the models are showing, and it stays out in the Gulf somewhere, hits Mexico. It's not even an issue, but they're going to hype it. Now, the other probability is that it could make a right turn, go north, and uh, come right up, right up through us, go right up the state, park itself over in Tampa. And I have to say the media is really hyping this. They are pushing fear. Oh, my God, it could be a hurricane. With a hurricane, you know, there's flooding. And, and CNN did like a two-and-a-half, three-minute special on it, and they were showing footage of a tropical storm from, I don't know, six, eight weeks ago that was uh, out in the Gulf and had soaked Tampa and that they had some local flooding, which happens when tropical storms come through. The A lot of the cities down here are built to handle that and deal with it accordingly. It's what happens when you live in Florida. We're used to it. But man, they were pushing it. Wolf Blitzer's on there. Oh my God. You know, sometimes tropical storms can be more dangerous. In fact, they are more dangerous than hurricanes because they produce, they don't move as fast and they produce a lot more rain and a lot more flooding. Well, you know, that's uh, very unscientific of you there, buddy. Did you ever bother to even research the fact that you can't really tell what a hurricane is going to do based on what past hurricanes did? You can make an educated guess, but hurricanes are each their own creature. And especially with geoengineering and weather modification, who knows what you could do with it? That leads me to the other point of this. Now, if you want to look at it strictly from a view of it's a storm, it's hurricane season, which it is. And they're going to use this, uh, like Rahm Emanuel said, never let a good crisis go to waste, right? So, oh my God, hurricane, hurricane, hurricane. Trying to freak out the protesters, maybe scare away people that would come down. Who the hell wants to deal with a hurricane, especially people that are from out of state and don't know what a hurricane's like, never been through one. They're not fun. But to an out-of-stater, they might seem really scary. Just like someone who's never been through an earthquake or a tornado or something. If you don't know what to expect, the unexpected. I mean, it, that, in and of itself, it's, an, it's a frightening uh, example of Mother Nature's power. But if you don't know what to expect, it makes it even worse. And your imagination can run wild. So maybe, maybe they're just pushing it, hyping it, I should say, because... The word pushing is going to come into play in a few minutes. But maybe they're just hyping the hurricane, they being the media, the GOP establishment, the people in the area. Maybe they're hyping it to scare away protesters. You know, the mayor of Tampa, was he was on the news, and he said, well, if we have to cancel the RNC, we'll cancel it, you know. You know, it would make it much easier for all those cops and him, wouldn't it? Because he wouldn't have any lawsuits to clean up. That hurricane came rolling through there. That leads me to part two. We know they can control the weather. This isn't an if. This isn't a a uh, a dream or a uh, a fantasy of mine. This is reality. Since the fifties, they have been experimenting with geoengineering, weather control, weather manipulation, uh, and. Or at least weather control, which leads into the whole geoengineering thing. Because then once you realize you can control the weather, you realize that you can do other things. And that, that's what it, it turned into. But the weather manipulation that we all know about, it's, it's real. And everybody always says harp. And right off the bat, somebody will say, well, uh, you know, how can they use harp? Uh, that's a conspiracy theory. That crap, it's all baloney, blah, blah, blah. It's just a radio frequency antenna. Yeah, well, used in conjunction with chemtrails, especially uh, when they're laden with barium and aluminum. Uh, the aluminum itself, the particulate is up there. If you aim this antenna at a specific area, you can heat up that whole area, the atmosphere, much faster. And like uh, Scott Stevens says, in uh, Mike Murphy's new movie, Why in the World Do They Spring? He explains it very, very scientifically, very, uh, like, right to the point. You heat up that atmosphere, the atmosphere is going to 
expand. And that's what the atmosphere expands upward. It, it pushes um, upward. And it, it creates these domes, high-pressure domes, which you see now uh, prevalent a lot. And again, I've pointed out, talking about Hurricane Aaron on 9-11, how high-pressure system dome came down and bounced that hurricane away from New York. Well, there is a possibility that maybe, maybe, maybe they're going to play with this storm and steer it towards Tampa on purpose. Now, why would they do that? Well, I'll finish up with this thought on the other side of the break, and then we'll get to a few other things. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying the possibility is there. We'll be right back. All right, so when we went to break, I was talking about this hurricane supposedly bearing down on the RNC. The thing's not even at Puerto Rico yet, and they're already you know, freaking everybody out. But we know how the mainstream media operates and the people that control them. The big F word there, no, not the one you think. Fear is the F word I'm referring to. Fear. That's their favorite thing in the world is fear. They need you to be so afraid that you don't know which end is up. And part of that is to pump out this constant barrage of BS on um, television and through the uh, Fox News or faux news, as I like to call it, Fox News and uh, CNN and MSNBC and PBS and the rest of them, ABC. They're all controlled and they're all going to pump out fear. Now, that's where I was going with the fact that even if it is just a little storm and nothing comes of it and it goes south of Cuba, or even if it, it, it does come up towards them, but it turns out to be nothing more than a tropical storm, and by the time maybe up there, a tropical depression, people will still have already sucked up that fear vibe. And it's the hype. It's, you ever notice it's not so much about the event itself, but it's about the hype leading up to the event. Because they can control things. That's where they're amping the fear. And they need their little lapdog media dirt bags to do it. So regardless of uh, whether or not, let, let's take the steerable part of the hurricane thing out of, the, out of the equation again, just for a second, and look at it like, hey, the, the fact remains that it's an event. There's going to be protests. It's a big event politically. There's going to be protests. And what better way than to psych your enemy out because that's how they look at everybody, right? They look at the people that want to protest or anybody that doesn't, you know, drink the Kool-Aid as the quote-unquote enemy. So how would they attack how would they deal with that enemy? Well, psychological warfare. You scare the hell out of them so they don't come down. Oh, there's going to be a hurricane. There's going to be a hurricane. I've seen this so many times where they, you know, they cry wolf like this, then the storm maybe turns out to be nothing, but the damage is already done because now people have left. You know, I used to work in a tourist city and if the media went out screaming hurricane 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 run 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 all the t tourists would leave and then if the storm turned out to be nothing all the locals would be pissed off because now we just lost a week's worth of pay because all these people left and the way the tourist season works is it goes weekly each week a new group of tourists come in and out because people usually go on vacation for five to seven days now that's just a a small example you know, showing you how that could, the hype can cause uh, bad things or it could cause damage. Now, imagine if you, if you control that. Now it's not just you going, oh, there's a storm. Imagine if you're controlling that hype and you're wielding it like a weapon. A lot of people might be turned off. Oh, I'm not going to go down there if there's going to be a storm, dude. Screw that. So that's one way. And like I said, the other way is they, could, they might be steering it. Now, why would they steer a hurricane or a storm or anything towards Tampa? Well, think about it. And you can use weather as a weapon. It's plausible deniability because most people don't believe that you can steer hurricanes. Uh, you have no idea how many times I've had uh, conversations that turn into arguments with people. That Not on my end, I, but usually on their end because they get so emotional about it that they don't want to hear about chemtrails or geoengineering. It's like the one thing. I know people that know that the government did 9-11. And then they don't want to hear about geoengineering or chemtrails and think you're just a crazy, kooky, conspiracy tart. And they'll make fun of you for it. it, it it's a reality. They're talking about it. The, some of the footage Mike has in his film was from a geoengineering conference that he was down here in Florida attending when I met him. 
These are real geoengineers admitting that, yeah, we screw with the weather. We don't care. We're going to screw with the weather and do what we want. They don't care. They want to play God. So, think about this. Just for one second. If they have the power to do it, if they have the power, which we know they do, so they have the power to control the weather, what's it to them to steer a hurricane towards the RNC to quell protests, anything? First of all, if think about it this way. The RNC is kind of it, – that's all theater anyway, right? It's all BS. Like we all know that the voting's rigged. We all know this is a controlled game. This is more for – the, to, to control the people, like a, a pressure relief valve more than anything. So they steer a hurricane towards Tampa, right? Now they can cancel the RNC. Get, get, that gets rid of Paul Fest, all the, all the Ron Paul delegates coming down, everything, gone. They, they, they move it to somewhere else, and a lot of the people that had planned to head down there won't be – not everybody that was going to converge on Tampa – will be able to converge on the new spot. So the numbers will be dwindling. They'll get their, their little moron in there, the, the, the two-man team of loser and bigger loser. And it's just like the first uh, election, by the way. Everybody's like, oh, Romney's going to beat him. No, he's not. You can tell by his choice of a running mate. There really is no intent. It's a game. It's a big game. Okay. Him and Ryan are going to lose so Obama can get four more years. It's a game. So if they if the hurricane hits, they, they close the RNC down. Now they, they, they can control Romney getting in with really you know no, no protests, nothing, because they're going to have to do damage control or, uh, and completely ignore all the protesters and Paul Fest and all the Ron Paul delegates and whatever's going to happen, right? If they make a big deal out of it and start beating people and tasing people, that's going to get some coverage. The alternative media doesn't matter. They have to contend with us now. So the mainstream media, they can't just ignore it. If they ignore it, they know that they look like asses. So they have to figure out a better way. So if you can control the weather, you can steer a hurricane, and you just make sure that thing heads towards Tampa, and that the RNC is guaranteed to get shut down, well, then it's much easier for you to get this game uh, you know, back on track because – Ron Paul and all the the, the uh, Ron Paul delegates and all that. This is a major like speed bump slash roadblock in their path, and they have to put on the appearance, the appearance of a unified party. And they can't do that. So if you can steer a hurricane and you can just make the thing go and turn to the right a little bit, and I'm not saying it's the Romney campaign or the GOP doing it. We all know that that's. That's red herring type arguments. It's crap. They're not the ones that control things. Obviously, this whole election is rigged. So in order to make their game go off without a hitch, they need to make sure, you know, at least from a, a tactical standpoint, to me, it would make sense to use that, you know, if you had the technology, steer that storm. It'll create problems it, it, and it creates a distraction. Because whatever happens, whatever the storm or whatever havoc the storm wreaks, then they can go down there and, uh, you, you know, all the focus will be down on there. The news will be on there. This, this whole election cycle, you know, the first time Obama got in, there was news coverage. He would fart and there was a news story about it. Okay, he would bend over to tie his shoelace and there'd be 15 uh, op-eds about how great of a guy he was for the way he tied his shoe. This time around, you don't see that kind of coverage. You don't see that kind of talk about the issues or anything, do you? It's only about, what, seven, eight weeks before the, um, the election? Maybe, maybe eight weeks, nine weeks, something like that, whatever. It, it, it's not that long. It's not that far away, a couple months. And yet, you don't really see much talk about the issues. The only thing you do is you see the bickering, the arguing back and forth, the negative crap, and then tons of news... Tons of other things to cover up, to keep you distracted. So, just a thought. Just a thought. I'm not, not going to harp on this too long, no pun intended. 
Just my thoughts. All right, we're going to break. We'll be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And staying on the topic of the RNC convention, that's why I didn't want to stay too long on the topic of the hurricane uh, or fear cane, as I'm going to keep calling it until it passes, just like I did when, what was it, Irene or whatever last year? They were flipping out. And I called it Fear Cane Irene. So we're going to call this Fear Cane Isaac because that's what they're turning it into. Just a big storm of fear. Ooh. All right. Anyway, uh, in relation to the RNC in Tampa, there's a few things I wanted to uh, cover. And one of them is uh, I have to bring Mr. Ben Swan on. He's going to, you're going to hear him a couple times tonight. But I want to play this clip because. The RNC Rules Committee apparently doesn't want to follow its own rules, even when uh, they find that uh, another group within the GOP has violated their own rules. They say, it's okay, even though you violated the rules, in this instance, it's okay. But see, if it was any other way around, they would be crying foul and flipping out and screaming. It, It just goes to show you, like I said last segment, it's all rigged. This is all rigged. Joe had uh, uh, Bev Harris on from Black Box Voting a couple months back. It, what more proof do you need? How about the guy testifying to Congress that the votes are rigged, that he hid the, the programming in the source code, and that you would only find it if you had the source code to the machine, and they won't give them Congress. The voting These companies like Diebold won't give them the source code to the machine for them to look at. And they say, industrial espionage, they're afraid it would be sold. Right, so they don't they don't get access to um, they don't get access to the source code, so nobody knows if this uh, program uh, it, it, you know is there. You can only go by what this guy testified and said, and then he dies in a single engine plane crash a couple weeks later. Mm, convenient, but I'm a conspiracy theorist. Anyway, let me play this clip by Ben. This guy, I'm telling you, he did they, this dude. He needs to get out of the, the local arena. And they need to put him... We, we need to pump him up more as the alternative media. We need to give this guy, Ben Swan, credit where credit's due. Because he's the only one out there in this mainstream media garbage reporting any semblance of truth. From the Republican National Convention and the RNC Rules Committee has ruled on the case of the Oklahoma Republican delegates who say the state GOP broke their own rules. So what did the Rules Committee decide? In our Commitment to Balance News, Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else. The case the RNC Rules Committee heard was very simple. Back on May 12th, when the Republican Party of Oklahoma held its state convention, there were all kinds of problems. But the biggest problem came at the end of the night. That's when state delegates were supposed to elect national delegates to go to the Republican National Convention. But the Republican leadership didn't like the way the votes were going. And so they did not call for a roll call vote, which is stated in the rules of the Oklahoma Republican Party. Instead, they called for a voice vote and had people stand. Because they attempted to end the convention early, a separate convention was held outside in the parking lot. Well, as of today, 13 delegates have contested the outcome of that state convention. And they submitted a simple three-page complaint to the RNC Rules Committee. Their argument, again, was pretty simple. That the party rules were not followed. And therefore, the 25 delegates and 25 alternates should not be seated at the Republican National Convention in Tampa. This week, the RNC Rules Committee came to a decision on that complaint. Kadosha Fish is one of those contesting the outcome. This issue is so easy for anyone, and anyone can understand it. You know, it's not hard to understand. The election of delegates at large and alternates at large shall be by roll call vote. I mean, that's as plain of English as you can get. So what happened? In a four-page response, the Rules Committee decided, number one, that state party rules require that a roll call vote be taken. Two, that state party rules do not allow a voice vote and standing vote only. Number three, that state party rules trump the convention rules. But then they ruled that the voice vote and the standing vote were good enough to elect delegates, and two, that there's no reason to believe that if a roll call vote had been taken, the end result would be any different. You see, Fish and the other delegates say this isn't even about overturning the end result, it's about a fair process. Why have rules if you're not going to follow them? You know, because if you have rules and you don't follow them, you make yourself look like a total idiot. And 
you know, why would someone want to be involved in a party that doesn't want to follow their own rules? So what you need to know is that in the Oklahoma case, the RNC Rules Committee decided that while the state party did not follow its own rules, the RNC wasn't going to require them to follow them. On the other hand, the Rules Committee also just ruled on the delegates from Maine. We've told you that the entire delegation is being challenged by the Romney campaign. But the end result there, the RNC Rules Committee just decided that the Romney campaign has no grounds to contest those delegates, and yet the RNC Rules Committee change their own rules so they wouldn't have to officially rule on the issue. Instead, leaving it open for a second challenge from the Romney folks. So the issue here, is it any wonder that the RNC Rules Committee wouldn't enforce rules on the states like Oklahoma? The RNC Rules Committee won't even follow its own rules. And that is Reality Check. So, as I said, these guys do not play fair. So what's to say that if they had the ability to perhaps steer a storm or use it to their advantage that they wouldn't do it. Here, I'm going to play you a little bit of the CNN coverage because I, I want to rip this apart. I, 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 I just, I can't, it's, I, you know, I hate when they pump out fear and that's what this is. Listen, this is the, the hurricane coverage and then I'll move on next segment away from this, but I have to, it's just eating me up. It's disgusting. Bring major, major flooding, and that's causing major safety concerns just ahead of the Republican National Convention, which is set to open up on Monday. Brian Todd has been taking a closer look at this worst-case scenario for Tampa and the immediate area. Could be right in the way, Wolf. You know, the way the Tampa Bay area is laid out, it is vulnerable to severe hurricane damage, and a tropical storm could do significant harm, as one did not long ago. This was only about eight weeks ago. And then, of Tampa, course, they Asia show Boulevard. they show all the flooded, uh, you know, the the a little bit of the the storm surge coming up, you know, just lapping up over the top. And if you've ever lived down here or been through a hurricane and you saw this, you'd be like, "That's it, really? That's all?" They made a big case out of this. A main drag underwater. This was no hurricane, but Tropical Storm Debbie, which delivered significant flooding to downtown Tampa, just a few blocks from the Tampa Bay Times Forum where the Republican National Convention will be held. If Tropical Storm Isaac turns into a hurricane as projected, Tampa could find itself in its crosshairs in the coming days. With a Category 1 storm that could come our way, the Hurricane Category 1, anywhere from 3 to 6 feet of flooding could impact this area. Brian Lamar, chief meteorologist with the National Weather Service's branch in Tampa, says that city is right at sea level in some places, just above it in others. Tampa's mayor says if the storm comes that way, public safety trumps politics. If we had to make that decision to cancel or to postpone or to move the convention, we will do that knowing full well that my obligation and the city's obligation is to move people out of harm's way. It would be the second straight Republican convention affected by a big storm. Actually, all the, uh, of the program tonight has been canceled. In 2008, much of the first night of the GOP convention was tossed out. That event was in St. Paul, nowhere near the storm zone. But officials didn't like the optics of opening a glitzy event while Hurricane Gustav raged down in Louisiana. A worst case scenario for Tampa, according to Lamar and other experts, that a strong hurricane around Category 3 strength comes ashore right around here, just north of Tampa. Now, because hurricanes churn in a counterclockwise motion in the northern hemisphere, they say that that... I got to stop it here because I have to point out the fact, you guys can't see this, but he's pointing to where... Tampa and St. Pete are, which, if you don't know, they're on the west coast of Florida, okay? And you have Tampa Bay right there where it, 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 St. Pete is kind of like this little peninsula. And what he's saying is, well, the worst case scenario is a Category 3 hurricane would come in from this side, hit here, and because they rotate, uh, the, the, the way they rotate counterclockwise, uh, they, it would literally uh, push water up into Tampa Bay and flood it, which is what happens if, if a hurricane was to, to park itself over there. But he's saying, he's pointing that, he's saying worst case scenario is it comes in from the west. Well, unless the storm goes south of Florida or over the southern tip of it and then goes up or goes out into the Gulf of Mexico somehow and then makes an erratic turn upwards, which in itself would be questionable, how is the storm going to make this dream, you know, oh my God, worst case scenario hit? You see how they're, they're, they're these guys, it, it's like, a, I'm not even going to play the rest of it. It's fear porn. It's disgusting. Oh my God, it's going to flood Tampa. Run, run. 
and Wolf Blitzer comes in, you know, yeah, tropical storms are more deadly than hurricanes. I know, because I'm Wolf Blitzer. Look, we're going to break. We'll be right back. I want to give a big shout out to Joyce Riley over at the Power Hour. Thank her for having me on Monday morning as a guest again. Uh, I just absolutely love doing Joyce's show. Uh, she is a gracious, gracious hostess. And I want to thank the guys over at Dangerous Conversation, over at uh, Radio IO over there. Those guys had me on their show last night as a guest. Uh, very good hosts as well. Uh, and always, uh, I've been on there before, and uh, always when I go on there, it's always great conversation. So I just want to give both of them a big shout-out. Uh, Power Hour with Joyce Riley and Dangerous Conversation with uh, Scotty Ledge. Thank you both for having me on. All right. The other last piece of 2012 election slash RNC slash GOP douchebaggery that I'd like to cover tonight. Uh, I'm not even going to get into this putz that said that rape if, women, if it's legitimate, if it's a real rape, their body shuts it down. Uh, he's since then, I've heard him on, you know, doing damage control. He was on uh, Sean Hannity's radio show the other night. And uh, he said, yeah, I was basing that off an article I read years ago. Well, uh, you know, maybe you're not smart enough, sir, to even be running. And I'm not saying that because I'm a Democrat and, or, you know, or a Republican or I buy into either side. I'm saying that as a citizen, if you really think that women's bodies can shut down a rape, like the pregnancy uh, due to a rape, and the, the, the body says, oh, this wasn't consensual sex. Oh, hold up. Stop. Stop. You know, sperm, you have to go to the left line over here. This is the rape line. No, it's not, not how the body works. Genius. And if you're not that smart, uh, if you're uh, that ignorant, if your level of ignorance is that high that you can't figure, it, figure that out, which is basic human biology, right? Okay, even a moron, even a drooling moron knows that any, a woman could get pregnant from being raped. Okay, It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Maybe you're not qualified for the position that you're in. You think you are, but me thinks you're not. Because, see, I'm your boss. We pay your checks. We, send, we write you your checks. We're the ones that have to pay the cash that goes into that paycheck you get. So guess what? You're fired. You're an idiot. I'm not even going to harp on it any further. I don't think he should drop out. Uh, I just don't. I think he should. that should make, show you how illegitimate most of these morons are. And it's not just him. Most of these idiots across the board. By the way, Paul Ryan wanted to redefine rape. And the GOP is actually trying to do it, which, you know, these people kill me. They really do. They're trying to ban abortion, and I'm not going to go off on this, but they're trying to ban abortion. Okay, and pretty much – I was listening yesterday to a report. They want a, a constitutional amendment to ban it even in cases of rape. And they think like this guy, oh, well, the, the child shouldn't be uh, – he shouldn't be punished. Just – are you know the level of for if you guys really think that you're trying like if you really buy into this, I don't buy into the two party you know left versus right thing but if you really do you're the only thing you people are doing is dividing the country and pissing more people off especially the female population I, I don't think lawmakers should be telling women what to do with their bodies personally that's my and you know I I don't have the right to tell a woman what to do with her body what gives these people the rights i'm way more intelligent than these jerk offs are i think things out and i wouldn't dare to think that i have the right to tell somebody what to you know a fe a woman what to do with her body i don't have the right to tell anybody what to do with their body it's their body natural law basics of natural law these people don't understand any of this so out of touch so anyway the point is this goes to show you this guy this guy is a douche and I'm not, I don't want to. I've already spent too much time on this as it is, because this guy's gotten raked over the coals. He's just, it's just, it goes to show you the mental capacity of the idiots that we vote for. And we, you know, we look to these people like they have capes and uh, leotards with a big S on the front of it, or Batman or whatever superhero you want to put in, you know, in, in there. And we look at these people, uh, not me, but 
a lot of people look at them like they're some sort of special individual. And yet this Jagoff can't even uh, you know, differentiate between science fiction and reality when it comes to how the female uh, anatomy works and how reproductive uh, systems work. And this guy's an idiot. And yeah, I, I, maybe I go at it from a, a layman's approach and, you know, well, Papa, you're, you're being kind of mean to him. No, I'm not. He's an idiot. And do you want that kind of guy in power voting on things like the NDAA or CISPA or anything else? Idiots like that are the reason why we have a problem because they're so easily controlled through their ignorance and their fear. I don't want that moron in charge. I don't want none of these idiots in charge, to be quite honest with you. I want to get some blue-collar people that have worked their whole lives in charge and understand the way things are and that aren't pedophiles and part of weird sexual secret society cults and everything else. I just want to get some average people in there. I know, I know. I'm crazy. Anyway, Paul Ryan. This guy is not as uh, clean and uh, conservative as one would have you believe. Uh, again, I, I think it's just set up for failure, but I'm going to let Ben Swan tell you a little bit about Paul Ryan. Well, we had hoped to sit down with the seven-term Wisconsin congressman and ask him some questions today. Despite our repeated requests, no dice. So what did I want to talk to Congressman Ryan about? Well, how about his spending record? For someone who has been deemed a great fiscal conservative, his recent history could prove otherwise. Go back a short four years to 2008, and Congressman Ryan was one of the lead voices pushing Republicans to vote for TARP. Remember TARP, the $700 billion bailout of Wall Street firms like Lehman Brothers? The big spending TARP bill that was the inspiration for the Tea Party in 2010 after lawmakers began bailing out financial firms. So here's a clip of Congressman Ryan in 2008 on the House floor making his case for TARP. When Secretary Paulson came to us about a week ago, he gave us a three-page bill that said, give me a blank checkbook and put $700 billion in it. I was offended at that time. And so what happened since then? We added 107 pages of taxpayer protection to that bill. We understand the gravity of this situation. And we worked with our colleagues on the other side to make this bill a better bill. We made sure that there's an insurance program that makes sure that, Washington, that Wall Street shares in the cost of this recovery plan. And we also made sure that the executives of these companies that made these bad bets don't profit from this rescue recovery plan. But that wasn't true. Despite Ryan's promises that none of this taxpayer money would go to line the pockets of those who created this mess, it did. The New York Attorney General's office published a report on that bailout money in 2009. And the New York Times printed some of the reports stating, quote, nine of the financial firms that were among the largest recipients of federal bailout money paid about 5,000 of their traders and bankers bonuses of more than $1 million apiece for 2008. But the Wall Street crisis was an unusual situation, right? Well, maybe, but Ryan didn't just vote for TARP in 2008. A few months later, he also voted for the auto industry bailout. He voted for Medicare Part D, the largest expansion of Medicare in history. He voted for the massive highway bill that included that famous bridge to nowhere. And in 2001, he voted for the airline industry bailout. So what does Paul Ryan really believe? Does he believe that companies are too big to fail in some cases? In fairness, Governor Mitt Romney also supported TARP. Then-Senator Barack Obama voted for it, as did then-Senator Joe Biden. Both Obama and Biden also backed the auto bailout as well. But Ryan is supposed to be the alternative to big spending. Still, the core of what I wanted to ask the congressman about today, this last piece of that sound from 2008. Madam Speaker, this bill offends my principles. But I'm going to vote for this bill in order to preserve my principles in order to preserve this free enterprise system. This bill offends my principles, but I'm going to vote for this bill to preserve my principles. What you need to know, what I'd like to know, what does that even mean? President Bush at the same time said that he abandoned free market principles to save the free market system. So how does that work? Congressman Ryan, which principle did you preserve by voting for TARP? What other principles can be preserved by abandoning them? I'd really like to know. And that is reality. Now, again, this guy deserves a Pulitzer Prize, uh, at the very least, for his work, uh, Ben Swan. 
because he tells it like nobody else on the uh, the mainstream boob tube will. There, this guy, Ryan, people have, as soon as he was picked, people were coming out of the woodwork poo-pooing him. But see, that gets lost by the controlled opposition on the uber-liberal left that come out and make fun of him for certain things. So right off the bat, because the information, even if uh, I came out with something against him first or or Joe or or, or anybody, you know, uh, Ryan Brooks here on the network, say he came out and he broke some news, you know, oh, my God, Paul Ryan's a douchebag, right? Uh, and the mainstream media, uh, they would pick up maybe a day or two later this story, but by then the liberal lefties, the morons, Pelosi and all them are, are, would be parroting it. And what happens? And they know this. The people that buy into the left-right paradigm on the right side go, oh, if she said it, you know, it, it, you, you go to tell them something and it's automatically, oh, well, Nancy Pelosi said it. So if she said it, she must be an idiot, right? Because obviously it doesn't matter if she was repeating what somebody else said because the words came out of her mouth and his brain has now been attached to Nancy Pelosi or whoever else said it. It's a game. It's a game. You're all being played. I don't include myself in it any longer, at least to that aspect, because I'm a, a, I, I'm awake to this, and I see it. But there, this is all a game. We're all being played. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hour one up, hour number two coming up. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with hour number two here on tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. It is August 22nd, 2012. It is the middle of the week, Wednesday, hump day. And I think I covered the uh, epic douchebaggery within uh, the Paul Ryan slash Romney campaign slash GOP slash uh, RNC slash CNN pushing fear with this hurricane. I think I've been able to uh, lay that out pretty clear. And again, I'm not saying that they're steering the hurricane. And yes, you see, Popeye, he was on air last night, and he said most definitely. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, as I said, it could just be a storm, and they're using it to their advantage. Just the fear of it alone, which that very well may be it. But if the hurricane makes a weird turn or anything, makes a beeline for the RNC, then I'm going to have to hoist the bullshit flag and say, hmm, something stinks. And all all I'll say is... um, Pay attention to the chemtrail activity because they do this stuff days ahead. So if they, they want this thing to hit within the next day or so, they're going to be chemtrailing the crap uh, out of the area. So I say keep an eye uh, out from where the storm is now all the way uh, over to, let's say, um, the, the center of the Gulf of Mexico at least. Uh, try to find out where the prevailing wind patterns are coming from that are feeding the storm. And then look up, uh, you know, you want to, if the storm is by Puerto Rico, uh, you say it was over Puerto Rico, then you'd want to look, I don't know, a thousand miles to the east of that and see if the, if the trade winds are blowing, which they normally do, if they're blowing over from the east to the west there and they're pushing the storm, you want to see if they're chemtrailing the crap out of the area uh, behind the storm or in front of it and see if they're feeding it or anything. They're satellite imagery, so they get caught with their chemtrails all the time. You know, their uh, their eye in the sky, as it were, has a tendency to catch their uh, their uh, douchebaggery. The only way to put it nicely. So, I would go uh, just keep an eye on it, and I don't have time myself to do it, or else I would spend time doing it. But I know there's people out there that monitor the chemtrails and the geoengineering, and uh, you know, pe- even Dutch Sense, he does the the weather and stuff. So, uh, and anybody hears this. Keep an eye on that over the next few days. It's the 22nd now. It's August 22nd, 2012. So uh, just in case you hear this on a rebroad in another day or so, keep an eye out. Just see if they're playing with the storm. That's all. I'm not saying they're going to. I'm just saying that it, the possibility is there. And for you to not look at it would be, um, at the very least, you'd be um, doing a disservice to yourself. All right. I want to shift gears, and I want to cover this story now. <clears throat> And I, I took a few days to make sure I, I looked over this. Uh, there's a couple different angles I'm gonna, I, I, I want to discuss about it. Uh, but first, I, uh, I want to at least talk about what the situation is. The, 
a couple, I don't know, maybe it was a week ago now, I guess, five days ago. Uh, I think it was last Friday. This former Marine named Brandon Raub was kidnapped, basically, by uh, the federal authorities with the help of the local police and forcefully put into a psychiatric ward within the VA hospital system. And it, it, it wasn't because he was out talking weird or, you know, having a conversation with a tree. It was because uh, this decorated Marine had the audacity to actually exercise his free speech rights. Now, when I first heard about this, I was like, is this a setup? Is this they're just trying to do this to scare people? Maybe, you know, frame somebody, you know, the guy's a Marine. He's an outspoken veteran. So I said, let me, let me go to his Facebook page. Let me see what kind of craziness he he said, you know, to piss off the feds. He must have said some crazy stuff like, I'm going to kill the president or, you know, I, I plan on doing bad things or something to that effect. He had to have, uh, he, he had to have brought that up in order to get them to come down on him like that, right? So I look at his Facebook page. Wrong. This guy didn't say anything worse than what I've heard even Limbaugh say, let alone a quote-unquote truther. And the the media, which I'm going to play a clip from Fox News, I'm going to rip it apart, but, you know, they they show the, the part where he's talking about, I'm going to, he made a comment about grab my axe and sharpening my axe and going to get me some heads or something like that. So, did he threaten anybody with that? Well, Popeye, he said he's going to get an axe and cut someone's head off. No, he didn't. He said, he was sharpening his axe and going to get some heads. Did he say he was going to go after anyone specifically? Did he threaten anybody? Did he threaten a politician? Uh, did he threaten anybody in government? Did he even threaten his next-door neighbor or just anyone over the Internet? No. And he, t- he talked about 9-11. And uh, wait till you hear the Fox News clip. The one guy, because, you know, they always have to have the – the two sides of the story, right? The one against it and the one for it, whatever the case may be. And the one guy is like, the one that's for it is like, well, you know, I mean, he's got some crazy ideas that the government was even involved in 9-11, you know, that in itself is, you know, should be cause for alarm. So they're they're trying to, and you'll, I'm going to rip it apart. I don't want to get too sidetracked on the video until I play it because, you, you know, I have enough fodder with that to go off on it. But, uh, it's it's being the, – the narrative is being laid, even for the people that don't realize what it is. If this kid – now, from what I've researched, this is, not a, this is not fake, at least his arrest. Now, what they do with it afterwards, if they've launched little psyops here and there, okay, yeah. But from what I could tell, it, it is, this is real. You know, this, this kid was uh, targeted, and, and they, they arrested him. Now – the question is, were they monitoring his Facebook posts or was there somebody on his friends list who was quote unquote scared by what he posted and turned him in? Because that's been happening as well. A blog talk radio host got locked up for like 20 hours uh, under mental evaluation because he had posted some – he had posted a comment on um, Facebook saying – uh, I think the hammer is going to drop soon, and uh, you know, I, I just to make sure to protect myself, I recently went out and purchased some, you know, a, another firearm or something like that. He didn't say anything. I mean, just that you know, I wouldn't have even said that if I were him, but that's his personal choice. You know, if anything, it was just uh, a case of too much information. Like you're giving out too much of your personal information, and you're breaking your own operational security. That's the way I looked at it, but. That's not a punishable offense. That's his own personal business. So if he wants to air it, then that's his call. Well, he got detained and uh, taken for an evaluation, and they wanted him to sign an agreement saying that he was uh, mentally ill and that uh, he would give up his guns. I mean, first of all, why is the mental health system being politicized? Because that's what this is. They're saying that if you have free speech... If you don't think the government is good, if you think government is bad in any way, or if you think the government's trying to screw you, which it – I mean go look at history and you'll see it has. 
all right, then you must have a mental illness. And now you're a danger to society. See, they're dragging mental health and mental health professionals, which I've, I've already told you my thoughts on mental health. It's all a bunch of crap, okay? It all stems back to the, the study of mind control and stuff. That's where psychiatry comes from. So these quack doctors who push you know, mind-controlling and mind-numbing medication are now being dragged into the political spectrum. And if you have any type of political speech, you must be mentally ill and need to be locked up because you're a danger to society. And that's the case with this kid, Brandon Rao. But I shouldn't say kid. He's a he's like 26 years old. He's a man. And he's just younger than me, so I, I, look, I always say kid in reference to people younger than me. Anyway, he's a decorated Marine. I should call him uh, at least by his name, give him a little more respect. Anyway, uh, he, it, you know, all he did was practice his First Amendment right to free speech. But see, if anything, they're scared of this kid. Chickens. We're going to break. We'll break back. Fuck. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, if anybody's wondering, yes, I do have kind of a... Um, I guess you could say, I don't want to say frog in my throat. It sounds more like a chainsaw stuck down there. But, uh, yes, for the past couple of weeks, my uh, my throat's been a little off. And uh, I uh, I thought it was something I had. But um, I've, I've been told that I've been pushing the vocal cords a bit too much because I've been doing uh, at least uh, five or six different... Uh, shows a week between mine and going on other people's and then uh, being invited as a guest. And uh, I'm told that I'm overtaxing my vocal cords. So I'm just trying to uh, take it a little easy on them. I've been drinking uh, some honey and stuff like that, trying the, the El Natural uh, stuff rather than taking any sort of medicine. But I wanted to explain why it sounds like I swallowed a chainsaw recently. <laughs> so in case anybody's wondering, because I got a few emails asking me if I was okay. Yes, I'm fine. I, uh, I've just overtaxed the old vocal cords a little too much. But uh, the new world order isn't going to stop. And this, uh, this global government crap isn't going to stop for my vocal cords. So I have to be a big boy and put my big boy pants on and soldier up. And that's what I'm going to do because... I, for one, am not a pussy, so just got to deal with it. It's the way it is, right? We all have to make sacrifices to get through this, so my my burden to bear, no one, no one else's. Anyway, I hope that uh, quickly explains it. I want to get into this, this Fox News crap video, uh, and I'm not going to be able to get the video all, all played in the first uh, this segment. I'll have to use two segments because you know how I am with my mouth, and this video is just ripe with BS. Here we go. I'll try to get like at least 10 seconds into it. I'll try. I can't promise, but I'll try. ...is arrested and involuntarily detained in a psychiatric ward for posting some anti-government messages on Facebook. Several civil rights groups in Virginia are now saying that the police violated the First Amendment rights of this 26-year-old veteran. According to the police, he posted the following message earlier this month. Sharpen my axe. I'm here to sever heads. All right, there's a lot more to this whole... Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my God. What happens if he was a hunter and he had deer carcasses hanging in the backyard and he was going out there and he was going to sharpen his axe and sever the heads of the deer carcasses because he had a couple of dead deer that he just hunted that were on his property? I mean, it, it's just an example. The, the insanity. He makes an innocuous post like that, and that's what you're going to go after him for? Mm. Story. So I'm joined now by Esther Panich. She is a criminal and civil trial attorney. And Fred Tisi is a former federal prosecutor. Welcome. And the, the dude, Fred, there, uh, the former federal prosecutor, he's the one that thinks that if you believe 9-11 was an inside job, you should be locked up. Just wait. Uh, to you both. So Thanks for having me. That's Thank what you. we know about the post, that he, that he wrote, uh, sharpen my axe, I'm here to sever heads. Then there's a state law that allows the emergency temporary psychiatric commitment upon the recommendation of a mental health prof professional uh, in the state. 
And that's what they acted on. Did they do anything wrong, Fred? No, you know what, Martha? I don't, I don't think they did. You know, let's not forget that within the last four weeks, a military veteran shot and killed a bunch of Sikh pacifists and a police officer. We had the worst act of domestic terrorism in our country by an active military guy. He just mentioned Oklahoma City and McVeigh and the Sikh Indian shooting. You, you know, do you think this guy actually... I, I don't, I mean, he, they, they, they give them the stuff, you know, the night before and they prep for this. But do you, I mean, do you think that's a coincidence that he just happened to mention those two events? Oh my God, the Sikh Indian shooting, you see, that guy was a vet. He got out of the military, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago, but see, he was a vet. Doesn't matter. He was a veteran. So that, that justifies detaining this kid. That justifies taking this kid and, you know, putting him in a psych ward because, hey, somebody else did something 10, 12 years ago. And we've had all these recriminations about what happened in Colorado, about people saying that there may have been evidence that this guy was going to do something. So he hasn't been arrested. And quite frankly, law enforcement doesn't have the luxury of waiting to find out whether or not this guy's really serious. And he does have some issues, including his theory that our government was involved in the 9-11 terrorist attack. So I think, you know, he hasn't been arrested. You see that? Oh, he does have some issues, including the fact that he thinks the government, was, our government, was involved in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. So he's saying that, yeah, clearly the guy does have some mental problems. Now, th this guy's a prosecutor, or a, re a, a former prosecutor. Who the hell is he to make that judgment call? But he is. That's his personal view, and it's being put across like it's the accurate correct point of view well he's got some issues i mean he's already mentally unstable <laughs> he thinks the government was involved in the 9-11 terror attacks he's been sent down for evaluation no one's ever gone to jail for an evaluation so it raises the question though esther i mean you know where is the line of free speech he wrote this on a facebook page he did not target any specific individuals as far as as far as i could tell in, in taking a look at this story uh you know what are you allowed to say what are you not allowed to say this, we have entered the era of thought police. If the police can now come in based on what you are expressing, as is your First Amendment right under our Constitution, which, by the way, is something this veteran fought for. Okay, I, I have to correct her there. He didn't fight for the Constitution in Iraq or Afghanistan, lady. Okay, so one thing you're wrong. It's, I, I agree with her on everything else she says except for that little point. But she, she's making that point to say, hey, look, he signed up to protect the Constitution and protect your right to free speech. And here his is being violated. That's the point that she was trying to get across, just using a very bad example. For all of us, then we have now, there is no line between your ability to, uh, to criticize the government and now going to jail. And in fact, he was arrested. This may not be a criminal case, but when you are detained and not free to leave and sent to a hospital involuntarily, you are being detained. Let's not make any mistake about it. If he was free to leave, then I would agree he's not being detained, but he is not. And in fact, he was placed in cuffs. He was placed in the back of a car, a law enforcement because vehicle, he would not go and taken to the hospital. Uh, his, his How mother... many people would go voluntarily? Yeah, exactly. You see, well, you know, he had to get placed. You see how the Fox News anchor, the little bimbo, whatever you want to call her. And yes, some people get offended. Mm, Popeye called her there bimbo. You know, that's not nice, Popeye. No, she isn't bimbo. They put her, I, whatever her name is, Martha, whatever. They put on 15 pounds of makeup on these broads. They put on hot pink or red dresses, stuff that's flashy and catchy to the eye. They make sure they're hiked up to a certain level. They make sure they hug their ass and their boobs, okay? And they, they dress them up like a Barbie doll, and they send them out there to look all pretty because you know what? Three-quarters of the Fox News listeners that are men are going to look at those guys, or the women rather, and say, um, you know, they're pretty. I don't care what she's saying. I'm just busy staring at her because she's pretty. And meanwhile, they'll be looking at her going, man, I'd like to have sex with her. And the whole time she's trying to tell them something, and they're not paying attention to it. But their, their brain, their subconscious is downloading the crap that's being put across. They use these news bimbets, and they use the little Ken doll guys, too. Of course, most of them are very effeminate now. But they, they use them to keep people distracted on whatever level. And then when they got you, you know, while you're, you're awake, you're, your waking self is distracted, your subconscious is sitting there downloading all this crap that they're pumping out. And she's like, well, of course, you know, who would go?
you know, you know, I guess I wouldn't go when I when we come back on the other side of the uh, uh, of the break, uh, I'll be able to finish up the clip, but I'm gonna play a little bit more of it. I, I want you to hear more of it because we got about a minute, well, yeah, a little less. But I want you to I want you to hear where Martha says, she's like, yeah, well, you're right because it took the blonde saying, well, who who would go voluntarily? Listen really quick. No, I agreed. Oh. I, his mother no. says that his free speech has been violated. Uh, 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 agreed. Uh, uh, agreed. Tries to move on to the next thing. Doesn't want you to pay attention to the fact that would you go voluntarily for your free speech being violated? But let's not pay attention to that. We're going to break. We'll play it back. All right, we're back. I want to get back into this clip. I'm going to start it back about 10 seconds before right where... Uh, uh, we left off because I want you to hear, and I won't interrupt it this time so you can hear it in the full context. You can hear how she just blows off, eh, yeah, you're right, eh, and then tries to move on because she doesn't want to address the point that the 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 woman, uh, you know, one of the two people that she has on the to go back and forth, she makes a point of, because Martha says, well, you know, he, uh, she said, well, he was handcuffed, and uh, Martha, the Fox News talking head, goes, well, you know, he wouldn't go with the police willingly. So it, trying to, you know, justify what they did, and the response to that was, well, would you? You know, nobody pretty much, you know, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but, you know, nobody would. So, like, who would? And she, got, she, she hits that with, uh-huh, and then moves on because now she knows that there is no real argument. There really is no real argument to refute that. So here you go. If he was free to leave, then I would agree he's not being detained, no. but he is not, and in fact, he was placed in cuffs, he was placed in the back of a car, a law enforcement because vehicle, he would not go and taken to the hospital. Uh, his, no. his How mother, many people would go voluntarily? No, I agree. Oh. His mother no. says that his free speech has been violated, uh, and that, uh, you know, she's, he saw a lot in the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. And the whole time, they, they, have the, they show the three of them up on the screen. And the, the former federal prosecutor, he's going, no, no. You might have heard him in the background, no. And he's just shaking his head like, no, no, no. Free speech, no. Not in this country, no. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that he feels that the U.S. government uh, was complicit in the September 11th attacks, which is something that you mentioned, Fred. So, you know, all of these things are things that many people would find, uh, obviously, very, very objectionable. But the question is whether Correct. or not you're, you're allowed to put them on Facebook and is the government. There is no question. First of all, well, but see, the question here is, no, there is no question. And why would, you know, uh, why would most people find 9-11 truth objectionable? The amount of people out there that actually think the government was at the very least com somewhat complicit in le at least letting the attacks happen is massive. They might not publicly come out and say 9-11 was an inside job, but I know plenty of people that you'd be surprised if you ask them what they think about 9-11, they'd say... Mm, you know, I used to think that we were attacked, but after years and years of seeing what's going on, maybe there's more to it. Even if they don't know. So I guess they're 9-11 conspiracy retards too, right? Fox News? Right, Mr. Former Federal Prosecutor? Anybody that thinks the government would do something bad should be locked up? Well, I guess that would include the founding fathers of this country. Right? Because wasn't this country founded on standing up against government oppression? Isn't that what all the kids are taught in their history books? Right? So you're, you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Just disgusting propaganda. Disgusting. You are a danger to society if you believe 9-11 was an inside job. Well, I do. And I'm not a danger to society. You people are a danger to society. The people that when you hear truth go, oh, lock him up. You're a danger to society. You're the reason why society is going down the crapper. Government allowed to sort of look at what you're putting on but, Facebook and I'm take you into custody. First of all, if it's on Facebook, it's public. Secondly, look, Esther Panis is a great lady. I know her. She's a phenomenal criminal defense lawyer. And we're lucky to have people like her looking out for our rights. But there are limits on the First Amendment. Every eighth grader knows you can't yell fire in a crowded movie house. So he just said there's limits on the First Amendment. No, there's not. There is no limit on the First Amendment. OK, there is not. And if you yelled fire in a crowded movie theater and people got hurt, you, the individual who yelled fire, would be charged with a crime. But if you 
band yelling fire in a crowded movie theater and there was no fire, uh, it's not going to stop people from doing it, moron. And you know that. You see, they, they bring them on to argue these, these, whole, these shows in themselves are fake. They're, it's crap. It's to try to, you know, they, they're, they're pushing because you'll see at the end Martha agrees with, uh, or you'll hear at the end, she agrees with the federal prosecutor. And, and, and it's very, um, it's, if you know what you're looking for, it's subtle, but it's done so that they know what they're doing. They're leading you through this whole, f- you know, faux argument between these two. It's a setup because they're given the, they're given what to talk about and come up with. Now their their replies may not be scripted by somebody else, but they're told the night before what they're going to be talking about. So they ha- they have to go on and you know you're you have to formulate the argument for you have to formulate the argument against. So it's 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 already like a, a scripted drama the night before, and that's why I play these clips because they see they use this to get the general public to accept crap and to take their, their BS. And it's my duty to, when they put out propaganda like this, rip it to shreds and use it as kitty litter. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And this guy, the limit on free speech. There is no limit on free speech. The reason why free speech is protected is because it's unpopular. Popular speech obviously doesn't need to be protected, duh. This guy has made comments that make people concerned that he's going to commit tremendous acts of violence. Uh, he's made comments that are, make people concerned he's going to commit tremendous acts of violence because he said if they're referring to the axe sharpening thing because he said he was sharpening an axe. Really? Really? Or are you afraid of him because he thinks that the government was complicit in 9-11? Or, or is that actually what you're trying to frame? Ah, oh, I think that's it which we've seen far too much of over the last 24 months. So guess what? Unless somebody can guarantee me that this guy's not going to go out and chop somebody's head off, law enforcement acted reasonably and acted in the only way they could under the circumstances. Let me ask you this, Esther. A judge ordered Raub uh, detained for another month. And in order to arrest him, they had to have uh, the support of a mental health professional. So you've got those two things. The doctor... The mental health professional said, yes, I believe he should be arrested. And now the judge, looking at this whole case, says you know, we need to hold him for a month. So that they must be seeing something here, I would, I would assume, based on those actions, that is of great concern to them. Well, Martha, from what I understand, I, I'm concerned about the timeline of all of this. My understanding is that the Secret Service and FBI went to his home to speak to him. Not that there was a mental health professional there. My understanding is that he was transported to a mental health facility where someone examined him, presumably at the behest of the FBI and Secret Service. So my question is, at what point did mental health really get involved? Because normally what this statute is used for is for people who go to the doctor and start babbling. I've had clients who were involuntarily detained because they make no sense. The fact that he is merely criticizing the government and nothing more well, at this I don't point. think it's merely criticizing the government to say, sharpen my axe, I'm here to sever heads. And as Fred aptly points out, you know, what if you look at these other situations in the Colorado movie theater and other places? Now, you see, he said seek shooting. She says Colorado movie theater. That guy wasn't a vet. He was working for DARPA. So, I mean, I guess if, if, if you're implying, Martha, that the federal government had something to do with the Colorado shooting, well, then, then you're accurate in, in, in that account. But that's not what she's trying to get across. And she throws the guy. They're just throwing stuff in there. Fear, 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 fear. Brandon was going to get you. Brandon, he's an ex-Marine. He's trained to kill. They eat babies. You know, that's the kind of propaganda the Japanese told its citizens during World War II to prep for the, inv- the invasion of Japan. They were telling them that uh, when the Marines landed, okay, that if there was an invasion and the Marines landed, they would eat their children. The same kind of crap go- went around in the Middle East, that the Marines would eat your babies. Now, I, I know people could say, oh, there's been war crimes. I've done plenty of shows on all that. But I'm saying propaganda as a, as a whole. Ooh, the Marines are going to eat your babies. And now they want you to think that Brandon here was going to eat your baby. He's, gonna, he's coming to get you. You know, then they go back and look at what people have written. And they look at folks who are around them and say, how could you not have acted on this when he was writing things like this? That's the, that's that's the concern. 
And Martha, if there it, are it, specific threats, I'm going to the sever, sever the head of X, Y, right, and Z, or I'm yeah, going yeah, to yeah, this you know place on this date, yeah. that is an actual actionable, imminent threat. Actionable just like, issue. Correct. Uh, and, and just it's, like it's Fred right mentioned that? correctly, Wait, quick, that you can't yell fire in a crowded theater because that's an imminent threat. Understood. But what this man do, did without more is not imminent and not actionable. Quick last thought, Fred, then we got to go. You know what? It's a balancing act. Dexter's not wrong. But at the end of the day, I'd rather balance this guy's inconvenience for 30 days, and quite fucking that's what it is, over making sure that something terrible doesn't happen. That's all, right. that's all so there is to it. So this guy would rather balance Brandon's quote-unquote inconvenience for 30 days. And after all, that's only really what it is, right? He's just being detained. His constitutional rights are being you know, trampled. His right to free speech trampled. But hey, Hey, you. Know, I, I'd rather him go to jail than me be me be a, a, a scaredy cat little wimp. Disgusting. We're going to break. Free Brandon Raub. Either we heal as a team, or we're gonna crumble, inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shish kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back, our way back, way back. Into, the light. into the light, into the light, into the light, we can climb out of hell, out of hell, out of hell, one inch at a time. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from. You. I mean, that's that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's just game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. Every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. It's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. There's six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're going to see a guy who will go that inch with you. No, you know. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. You got that right. Ladies and gentlemen, you know I like to play that from time to time, the old opening. It's still inspirational, and I like to play it from time to time to remind people that we need to come together uh, to be able to defeat what's going on. The If you want to look at it as a us-versus-them thing, meaning the, uh, the global controllers, uh, a social engineer, Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, if you want to look at it as an us versus them thing, then we need to get our stuff together because they're pretty squared away on their boat and we're not. Now, we have the ability to come together and be way more powerful, and we are. More than ever, more and more people are starting to come together. But certain certain factions lose a little bit of steam here and there. Like 9-11 truth, some people have said that it's, it's lost its steam and nobody cares about it. I don't really think that's the case. I just think some people are looking at it from a different uh, tactical standpoint and understanding that sometimes running around the street with a bullhorn 
just screaming 9-11 was an inside job doesn't always get the message across uh, like maybe perhaps doing a screening with questions and answers, which I actually see a rise in with uh, like Richard Gage going around doing his screenings and stuff. So there's just, I don't think that uh, 9-11 Truth, somebody brought this up earlier, I'm going to sidetrack myself a bit here for a second, but I don't think 9-11 Truth has stalled out. I just think that the tactics are evolving and they need to, you know, running around with a bullhorn back in the day was the way to do it, woke a lot of people up and you can still do it. Uh, but I think there, people are more apt to take what you have seriously if you're not jumping up and down uh, like a moron and you're not making an ass out of yourself. And there are people that do that and that's all good for them. But um, I, I, 9-11 Truth as a whole is evolving and I just think the tactics of getting the message across have evolved. I don't really think that it's lost uh, any drive. But I did want to play that clip in case uh, anybody you know, does lose their drive. Look, this is a tough fight. And, uh, you know, if we were just focusing on this fight and everything else in life was perfect, it would be enough to put somebody, uh, you know, in, uh, I, I don't want to say in the nut house, but uh, it, 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 would be, it would be enough to put you down, uh, keep you down. And, uh, you know, it, it really is a tough thing when you realize all the, the, the stuff that's going on, the level of things but it's not uh it's not undefeatable so don't let it get the best of you um i know some people get down when they you know just looking at that and then when you look at the rest of life coming in and kicking you in the ass you maybe a friend dies or a relative dies or something bad happens to you uh in relation to your life that maybe somebody else it wouldn't affect them but it affects you uh don't let it get to you that's why i like to play that to try to you know, just be a morale booster because, um, you know, I'm constantly talking about horrible things. So, so are other people. And here, at least on this broadcast, I have a tendency to expose stuff that other people might not even want to talk about because they might consider it taboo or maybe it bothers them that much. And uh, I, I think I should at least try to balance it out with uh, a good positive vibe. And uh, like I said on Facebook yesterday, I actually put this out as a status update to everybody on uh, Federal Jack's fan page. Uh, I, you know, I told everybody, I said, look, no matter what, just want to let you all know that I love you. And I will do my best to bring about the evolution of humanity. And I, I think people need to be told that. I don't, I don't think that you're a weak individual. I don't think you're, as a man, a weak man if you can tell other human beings that you love them. I think it's actually quite the opposite. I think being able to show love and being able to radiate that frequency and that uh, vibe, that energy, that makes you a strong individual. The controllers have people believing that you're weak if you deal with emotion or if you show love or affection. And I think that's completely 110% off the mark and done to keep everybody off their just the way that things are naturally supposed to work. The only way to get things, you know, if you're going to get things off track, one of the big ways is to get people to to actually have disdain for love. People run around, I hate love. Love stinks. Love sucks. There's tattoos. You know, love sucks. I got my heart broken by a woman, so I hate love. Love is horrible. And it's pushed out there all the time. Media. Uh, music, movies, TV, everything pushes it out there. Love's horrible. You shouldn't love. And then they show you nothing but violence and hate on television. So I try to bring quite the opposite. You are not a weak individual if you want to give love or show love. You are a strong individual. Don't buy into that. If you don't want to sign up in the military and go fight in a war of aggression or even serve the military at all, any branch, or serve the government, because you'd rather do something else and use your stuff, your energy positively, and your brains positively. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not less of a man. You're not less of an individual or a human being. So many times our culture is dominated uh, by people that push this, you have to be a, to be a man's man, you have to be a dickhead, you have to run around and 
hate on people and beat up the weaker people. You know, look, look at what uh, the, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a perfect example would be, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, but uh, football players. They're the, uh, the the quintessential, that's the word I was looking for, the, the quintessential uh, jock, you know, that that role that football players get into and then they go pick on the weaker and, oh, well, that's the way it is. It's the strongest, only the strongest survive. Actually, that's what you're taught by people who idolize people like uh, philosophers like Malthus who then justifies the means. That's why society is so effed up because we're being taught the same principles of these scumbags and at the same time, we're being taught to accept the fact that we're on the lower shit end of the stick and that we have to accept whatever they give to us and that we have to hate each other and no love and you're not a real man if you love someone. You're a pussy. The reason they do that is to keep us divided. They don't want you listening to me or anybody else. They don't want us getting along. No matter if we're different races, colors, 4,000, 5,000 miles away from each other, they don't want us connecting on a human level. Well, I say, screw them. They can kiss my ass. How's that? I'll connect with all of you on a human level. I love every single one of you, even the people that hate me. It's all good. It's all cool. I love every single one of you or else I would not be here. So don't put out that fear vibe. Don't buy into the... And hatred is not the opposite of love, by the way. The opposite of love is fear. Hate is the emotion brought on by fear. So don't buy into the fear. Just put out that love vibe. I know it sounds hippie-ish, but it's... <laughs> it's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. It's not New Age or anything else like that. It's as simple as the world needs more love. Start putting it out there. Do random acts of kindness. Tell your, your, your wife or your husband or whoever... Your friends, you love them. Give them a hug and a kiss randomly out of nowhere. Show an animal some kindness. Do whatever. Pump out the love vibe. That's how we'll beat this crap. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time. I love you all. I'll see you again on Friday. I'm out of here.